reeling from the loss. Experts are placing the blame on a lack of affordable housing and climate change, among other factors. So what can be done to protect lives and property? Well, joining us now is exactly attainable. So I want you to be aware of that possibility, that threat here moving forward. Let's take a look at our different forecast models, the European and the GFS, in terms of those rainfall QPF potential. So what are we thinking in terms of our totals? Well, you can see, according to the European model, we've got plenty of three to five inch totals, areas in the yellow, where you see that orange shading, that's where we could very well be looking at a half a foot or more. That's the five to eight inch range. And as Mark just showed us in some of those areas, that wouldn't take very much rain to cause some significant flooding. Now, the GFS model, maybe not as expansive in that zone of the heaviest rain, but still a similar flavor when we look at the footprints. We've got the three to five inches there in eastern Pennsylvania, throughout New Jersey, into Long Island with that kind of hot spot, that heaviest amount right there in the uh, west side of the New York City metro area. So certainly a concern already for some of these areas that were hit hard by Ida and could be getting more rain. And we just know these are areas that are very prone to flooding. We've got a ton of concrete in these areas. So we're not absorbing that rainfall. Instead, it's moving off. Future radar for a place like New York. We get into the late evening tonight, and here come some of those heavier downpours. You can see the storms will be bringing heavy rainfall rates. Once you get into the uh, reds and the purples, that's the really torrential rainfall that piles up quickly. Tomorrow morning, we've got a steady moderate rain across most of the area. So morning commute tomorrow, not not going to be a good one. We've got rain that will stick with us even into the afternoon. I think we'll get a little bit of a break uh, for, for a time, but more rain showers working through during your afternoon commute, your dinner time hours. By the time we get into Wednesday morning, anything is pretty hit and miss at that point, but still Tuesday. Double thumbs down. We look at the Philadelphia area starting tonight. Again, waves of rain working in. So this evening, you've got some of those scattered thunderstorms. Look at 1 o'clock in the morning, though. Philly to Wilmington, uh, over into parts of Jersey. We've got the steady rain, moderate to heavy downpours. By 10 a.m., beginning to see a little bit of a break work in, but we'll be watching for more rain showers out there into the evening. I think at that point it would be lighter stuff. But again, Mike, at that point, we're already going to have picked up quite a bit of rain and perhaps be already dealing with some of those flooding issues. Well, not to mention. Huge way, but we've got to watch for that flash flooding potential. Still not as uh, great of a concern, not as large of an area, but certainly spots to watch. Now, as we get into tomorrow morning, possibility as you head up into some of the higher elevations here, but down in the Southern California, certainly some of our major metro areas like Los Angeles, up towards Bakersfield, Santa Maria even, have at least the small chance of seeing some localized flash flooding issues. How about Wednesday morning into Thursday morning? Now we head back up into western Washington and Oregon. So we head to places like Newport and Tillamook, home of cheese, and then up towards Ocean Shores in Washington. So we got to watch those areas closely for, again, the possibility that that water could become problematic. Now, when we look at the future radar, you can see that slug of moisture just continues, particularly into parts of the Pacific Northwest tomorrow. That's why we're going to focus in on those areas. So less now for the Los Angeles area and San Francisco, or less attention in these areas. And instead, as we head into the middle part of the week, it's all about Washington and Oregon, even parts of northern Idaho and western Montana, Mike. Through the severe threat here as we go through the next few hours and over the next few days as well, because the severe doesn't turn off after uh, the night ends tonight. We've got a severe thunderstorm watch until 1 o'clock this morning for parts of North Carolina, for a lot of Virginia. This includes the Richmond Metro and then portions of Maryland as well. Watch continues until 1 o'clock. What we're watching for, the threat of gusty damaging winds, perhaps some hail, but we have also seen some tornado warnings along this line of storms. That one is just on the northeast side of the Charlotte metro area, and then you can see the warnings extend up into portions of the northeast. Really, we've seen around the Philadelphia area some severe thunderstorm warnings here over the last few hours. Here in Cabarrus and Rowan counties, we've got that tornado warning. Again, in effect, it's a radar-indicated tornado warning. The storm moving off towards the east. Uh, this is south and east of I-85. So Mount Pleasant, you're up next. Meisenheimer at 811. Halls Ferry Junction at 818. And then El Dorado uh, 
beyond that point. If I said the name of your town, lowest level, most interior room where you need to be. Again, these storms packing a punch, not just with the severe threats, but also with heavy rain here as we continue over the next few hours. So Baltimore to Richmond, 11 o'clock could be a very busy time for you. So everybody in the house may be waking up post bedtime as those storms roll through by three o'clock in the morning, watching some of the heaviest rain across parts of South Jersey into the outer banks. But then all that rain working into the New York area for tomorrow's morning commute going to be a soggy drive. Uh, set that alarm a few minutes early so you can get